Last Tuesday I told you that we're going to be talking about this evening about communication. Communication. Comunicación. Very, very critical um, today, communication. And I want to specifically, because, you know, communication is a broad topic. And with communication, you have verbal communication, of course. You have the articulation of words and thoughts that you communicate to another person or a group of people. Uh, you have nonverbal communication. You have body language. All, all of that is a form of communication. And we're not even talking about the communication today, social media, and other methods of communicating. Okay, so I'm not going to get into all that. That would take weeks and weeks and weeks, and we get into the we get into the woods. Next thing you know, I'm holding communication seminars. I don't want to do that. So we're going to focus on what is to me the most important aspect of communication, and it may come as a surprise to you that it has nothing to do with talking, speaking. Uh, again, verbalizing your thoughts got nothing to do with that. To me, and you, your opinion may differ, and that's fine, but to me, the most important part of communication is, are you ready? Listening. Listening. That's big. There's a reason why the Lord gave us one tongue in two ears. Doesn't that in itself tell us that we should listen twice as much as we speak, right? Mm -hmm. Listening. For 32 years, my wife and I, we've been in the ministry, and we've given all kinds of biblical guidance to all kinds of issues, troubles, problems. We believe firmly that the Bible has an answer for anybody's and everybody's problem, whatever that problem is, whether it's Troubles in marriage, parenting, financial trouble, conflicts of all kinds, the Bible addresses them. That's what I firmly believe. Mm -hmm. But here it is on the top of grievances, on the top of complaints. If I had to say, here's the one thing that we've heard over and over and over and over again across the board. Okay? So with financial trouble, with marital trouble, parenting, across the board, here it is. Lack of listening. How important is this subject? Lack of listening. How many times have we heard, sweetheart? My husband doesn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. How many times? Too many to count. Too many to count. How about the other way around? The husband who says, my wife doesn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. I share with her and I talk to her. She doesn't listen. Vice versa, my husband. He's absent. I talk to him. He doesn't listen. My kids don't listen to me. Kids say the parents don't listen to them. It's it's listening. Mm -hmm. My employer doesn't listen. The my employees that work for me don't listen, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Listening. Let me tell you why this is such a critical element, especially in the days in which we're living. Because um, when a person doesn't listen, say a pastor, a husband, wife, when they don't listen. What they are communicating loud and clear, whether they intend to or not, but this is what they're communicating. If you're a poor listener, you're also communicating that you don't care. A person that doesn't listen doesn't care. So it translates into not caring. Mm. No compassion. No love. Right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm not a good listener, if, I, if I'm not attentive, if somebody comes to me, and says, Pastor, I have this issue, I have this trouble, and I'm looking around the room, and I'm seeing what other people are doing, and I'm like, huh, like, I'm sorry, what did you say? What am I really saying? I don't care about your trouble. It doesn't matter to me what you're going through. That's what we're communicating. Let me tell you something. You know this, I've told you, I love the Word of God. Every time I read the Word of God, there's some aspect of our Lord that I'm captivated by. As we've been going through the Gospel of Luke, I have been literally captivated by the fact that our Lord was such a good listener. He doesn't interrupt people. He doesn't cut them off. You have to understand something. When he goes up to Levi, the tax collector, he's looking in his eyes. 
There's something that he's communicating in his eyes. There's something in his voice. When the leper comes to him, he's full of leprosy. He hears him. He listens to him. And now, these are people that the Lord loves and he's called into ministry. People that he has deep compassion for. But how about these Pharisees? Saints, listen to me. I have literally been mesmerized by our Lord's patience mm -hmm. with these Pharisees. And this is, we're just beginning. Mm -hmm. As we continue through the Gospel of Luke, these Pharisees, they hated him. Mm -hmm. Our Lord listened to them. And he knows everything. So our Lord knows that they're plotting his death. He listened to them. He took time to speak to their questions. He knew why they were asking. Listen, our Lord knew why they were asking. They don't care. They don't care about the answers. They don't care about nothing. They're just looking to trap Jesus. Jesus could have said, I don't have time for you. I don't have to listen to you. I know what you're thinking. Get away from here. I'm not listening to you. And I'm warning all these other people not to listen to you. And he does that eventually. Where he warns other people not to listen to them. He's patient with them. Wait a minute. He's helping them? He's trying to help them to understand? Are you kidding me? That's our Lord. Okay? Such a good listener. Our Lord is. Don't you want to be like Jesus and be a good listener? Listen, I'm going to go out on the limb here. And I'm going to say that the majority of us could, could improve in listening. I'm going to say that the majority of us are probably not as good a listeners as we think. Is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. I'll be the first one to admit right here. Mr. Johnny, I got so long, so much to go in this subject of being a good listener. My report card says NP. You know what NP? No progress. No Need progress. Him. No. And I. Need improvement. No. <laughs> okay, so so look. So my listening report card has two. Has NP, no progress, and, and, and I, needs improvement. Oh, my goodness. That's my report card. That's how bad I am. That's how greatly I need to improve. Okay? And here, and here I have two witnesses that say, yep. Needs improvement. <laughs> no, you've improved. And uh, no progress. No. <laughs> so here's where I don't have it. I don't have any trouble here communicating. If you ask me, listen. If you ask me what's wrong, I'm going to tell you what's wrong. You may not even like the answer, but I'm going to tell you the A to Z. I'm going to tell you to sit down, and I'm going to explain to you everything that's wrong. There are people that you ask them what's wrong. Obviously, you know there's something wrong, right? They're not behaving in their normal, how they normally behave. So you know there's something wrong. You ask them, what's wrong? Some spouses are like this. What's wrong? Nothing. That's poor. That's not me. I will tell you what's wrong. In Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, here's our text for this evening. Catch the foxes for us. The little foxes that spoil the vineyards. For our vineyards are in blossom. Now understand this. In Solomon's day, you would seek to protect your vineyard by putting a stone wall around it. And that would prevent the larger animals from coming and destroying the vines. Destroying the fruit, the grapes. Literally, that's what it means. Wherever there's vines, there's grapes. And so these stone walls were supposed to protect the vineyards. Now, the problem is that there were little foxes. And apparently in Solomon's day, this was a problem. Do you remember um, Samson? It was 300 foxes that he took and he, and he tied them all by the tail. So apparently, foxes are an issue. These little foxes would come in through the crevices of the rocks, and they would come into where the vineyard was, and they would destroy the grapes, the tender vines. They would gnaw on the tender vines and destroy the grapes because they can get in through the crevices. Who does that sound like to you? Like Satan, right? Satan doesn't need a wide open door. All he needs is a little crevice. Yeah. So here is where we could focus our attention this evening. Perhaps you're not being an attentive listener 
in your fellowship with Jesus Christ. You know, we have the tendency to come to the Lord and to unburden all our troubles, all of our fears, all of our concerns, all of our cares, but then we, we slip out. But we don't listen. We don't take time to listen to the Lord. Another area, our marriage, in church, etc., right? These are the little foxes that seek to destroy the vines. These, these, these issues of not listening, these are the issues, these are the little foxes that come in to destroy the vines, again, in our marriages, in our fellowship with Jesus, in the church. Because Christ wants to produce fruit in us. But we have to be careful of the little foxes. We have to hedge hedge the vineyard about with stones to protect from the little foxes. And again, listen, let me tell you, we've sat with people in desperate situations. I'm talking desperate, really, really, really bad, terrible. Child is on heroin, infidelity, financial ruin, broken, people destroyed. But the overwhelming majority of precious saints that have sat down with us with tears in their eyes, it's the little foxes that are destroying the fruit of Christ in their lives. It's the little things. It's not the big things. It's not, it's not everybody is struggling with big things. Sometimes it's just these little foxes. More common than not, it's the little foxes that are coming in to destroy the fruit. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. That Christ wants to produce in your life. This is a big topic in the Bible. Um, the Word of God addresses this all-important subject of listening. Listen, 550 times in the Word of God, we find the word hear, hearing, listen is mentioned in the Bible. 550 times. Wrap your mind around that. Here are just a few places where the Bible talks about listening or hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Word of God, listening. How does faith come? It comes by listening, not by talking, by listening. Matthew chapter 13, Jesus says the people were dull of hearing and thus they refused to be healed because they were dull of hearing. They weren't interested. They were burdened with their own traditions, religion, doubt, fear, whatever, but they were dull of hearing. They couldn't listen. And because they couldn't listen, they couldn't receive. And because they couldn't receive, they stayed in their sin. They weren't healed. They weren't forgiven of their sin. Jesus said in Matthew 13, verse 16, he said this. Jesus said, blessed are those who have eyes and see and ears and understand. How many times did our Lord speak to his apostles, the disciples, about his death and resurrection? Were they listening? Nope. Mm -hmm. They weren't listening. They missed it. Should, should they have been crying after Jesus was put in the tomb? Should had they been crying and afraid and scared? No. If they were listening, there was no reason for them to be fearful. In fact, or, or crying or sad, in fact, they should have been in hopeful expectation if they had been listening because every time that Jesus mentions his death, he mentions the resurrection. It doesn't end at his death. Mm -hmm. But they weren't listening. Why? Because their minds were on other things. Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Are you going to set up your kingdom now? Here, overcome the Roman Empire. They were thinking politics. They were thinking their own selfish ambitions and, and I want to be great in the kingdom. So they weren't listening. When Jesus says, I'm going to die and I'm going to raise again, it went right over their heads. That happens to us because we don't listen. The same thing. How many Again, how many times does our Lord say this? He who has an ear, let him hear. hear. Come on. He doesn't say, he who has a mouth, let him talk. That comes natural. He doesn't have to say that. And today the talking is social media, all kinds of platforms. People are just blurring out there, uh, vomiting all over the place with words that are destructive, that James says, be cautious of your words. Be cautious of this little thing in your mouth called the tongue. It's able to set an entire forest ablaze. What does that mean? That there's fire and literally a, a forest will catch blaze by a spark of your tongue? No, it means the destructive nature of your tongue that can destroy lives. It could burn them up. Discouragement. 
all kinds of junk that comes out of, out of our mouth to bring people down. And instead of edifying them and praying for them and encouraging them, no, we use our tongue for destructive things. So I want to address three areas where we need to ask our Lord to help us become better listeners. Listen, if you're a groovy listener, you're the best listener, maybe this study isn't for you. For the rest of us, this study's for me. I'm preaching to myself. I need to be a better listener. I'm going to encourage you here are just three areas where we need to be better listeners. Of course, I'm going to start with Jesus. So maybe I'm talking to folks this evening, saints, brothers, sisters, that would love to become better listeners and say, oh, I need God's help. I need God's help. I need to be a better listener. It all starts with Jesus. Okay? Fellowship with Jesus. First and foremost, Solomon said, let us catch us the little foxes that come in through the crevices and they come in to destroy the fruit of Christ. That wall that he's speaking of is speaking of protection. Number one, we have to be protective of our time with Jesus. We're not going to bear fruit by ourselves, to ourselves. We need to be, as Jesus said, abiding in the vine. Mm-hmm. So we need to set up a wall of protection to prevent the little foxes from coming in. Mm-hmm. There's a whole bunch of things that we could do. We can get up earlier. We can shut ourselves in our rooms with the Word of God. We can designate time in our day. Whatever you have to do, but you have to set up, put the phone away, put the laptop away, put all this junk of, that, that all distractions, put them all away. I am jealous about my time with the Lord. You have to be. You have to be protective of your time with the Lord. And listen, with your time fellowshipping with Christ, you have to make time to listen. You can't just come before the Lord impatiently, bringing your problems and your troubles. That's fine and it's all good. But listen, we have to spend time sitting in the presence of the Lord, allowing Him to speak to us. That takes time. How many Christians today don't discern the voice of the Holy Spirit? Because they don't make time. Because they simply don't make time to listen. To sit quietly. And to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I'm not here to ask for anything. I'm not here for blessing. I'm just here for you, Lord. I want to listen. What do you have to communicate to my spirit that is life? The words of the Lord are life. If you're in a dry, barren land, could it be that you're not listening? You're not taking time to just sit in his presence. And listen, let me tell you something. The Lord will make it up to you. If he, if he nudges you awake, and he does me a lot, he nudges you awake. And you, and you just, by the Spirit, you say, Lord, help me by your Spirit to get up and to just spend time in your presence. He will give you the rest necessary. He'll give you the joy. He'll give you the energy, the stamina that you have for the rest of the day. The grapes, the vineyard, they represent the fruit that our Lord wants to produce in us and through us. How does that come? Abiding in the vine. Jesus told us, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. So bearing fruit without being attached to the vine is impossible. Likewise, bearing fruit when we're attached to the vine is inevitable. Mm. Attached to the vine, you will, Jesus said, of a certainty, be bearing fruit. Not attached to the vine, fruit is impossible. You get that? So that's number one. That's where we start. That's where we start and we can say, Lord, please help me to listen to you, to listen to your word, to make time to invest quietly, sitting in your presence, freeing my mind of all the cares of this world and the kids and the job and the grass and the roof and the, all, all this stuff and say, Lord, by your spirit, all these things are out and I'm just here now. I'm present with you. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about listening, the little foxes in the church, catching the little foxes in the church, right? So we start with the Lord, let's move on to the church. 
the little foxes in the church. You know that we're warned, both in the Old and New Testament, that there would be a famine of the hearing of the Word of God in the last days. Mm -hmm. So listen, be so ever careful of the things that you are letting into your ear gates. I'm very selective as to the things that I open my ear gates to. I will open my ear gates to the Word of God. I will open up my ear gates to sound doctrine. I will open up my ear gates to corrective words, words of rebuke from people that love me. My ears are wide open for those things. But, my, but you also have to be very careful of the things that you allow in. Do you understand? What you listen to is as important as what you don't listen to. I'm going to say it again. What you listen to is as important as what you don't listen to. Listen to what it says in Amos chapter 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. There's a famine in the land today, is there not? Of hearing of the word of God. That's Amos 8, 11. In the New Testament, the idea carries over. 2 Timothy 4, 3. Paul tells Timothy, For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. A famine of the word of God. You have to be careful today what you listen to. What you don't listen to is as important as what you do listen to. So now thirdly and lastly, let's talk about the little foxes in our marriages or in our families. Here's a warning. You know, the enemy doesn't care how long it takes for him to destroy. He doesn't have to destroy immediately. He doesn't care how long it takes. And the method is not that important to him either. His goal is to destroy how long it takes and the method he employs, those things are not very important. He's about the end goal. And like these little foxes, that all they need is a little crevice to get in. Saints, listen to me. He may not bring your marriage down with infidelity, with adultery, with physical abuse. Your spouse may not be on drugs or, you know, abusing the finances or financial woes. He may not use those big things. He may just use the little things, the little foxes that come in to destroy the vine, destroy your marriage, destroy your kids. Lack of listening, that's one of them. Saints, listen, we need to pray in this area. How many, how many, even in our fellowship today, their marriages are crumbling, one brick at a time, crumbling, 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 and it's not about financial woes, and it's not adultery, it's not these other things. It's, it's, it's communication. And there's arguing. And that's creating all kinds of consternation, blame shifting. It happens in our marriage. Come on, I'm not going to sit here before you and say, Oh, look at us. We have it all together. We don't have it all together. We're growing in grace. We're growing in this area of becoming better listeners. I've had to confess to my wife, Honey, I'm sorry. Please forgive me because... I'm not as good a listener as I think I am. And vice versa. She's told me the same thing. She don't listen. We don't listen. We're not good listeners. I'm not going to pretend to be a good listener if I'm not a good listener. That's hypocrisy. I don't want to live in hypocrisy. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, we never argue. We never have a, a moment. We're two sinners. And yeah, we argue from time to time. We disagree. Let me just one real quick thing. Can I use one of your, can I use your iPhone? Can I use this thing? No. Here's, see, look, we almost got an argument right there. Look. Don't, don't hit the button. <laughs> I'm not hitting no buttons. <laughs> see? You see You see how easy we can get, get at it? Look it. What's this? Ah, I'll tell you what it is. It's a little fox. It's exactly. The enemy uses this little fox, this little device, Okay, the laptop, the iPad, the screen, the big screen TV, whatever you have, these are all little foxes right here. How many times do you address, and it's happened to us, how many times are you talking to your spouse and your spouse is 
not listening. And they say, I'm listening. No, you're not listening. If you're on your device, if you're if you're your mind is somewhere else and you're doing this, you're not listening. This this little thing right here is wreaking havoc. This little fox right here is wreaking havoc in families, marriages, children, everything. I didn't hit the I didn't hit the button. I love you. Solomon said, ha, catch the foxes. The little foxes that spoil the vines, the vineyards. Little by little, the little foxes come in. It's a crevice that, ah, the enemy, all, all he needs is a crevice. But little by little, grape by grape, the enemy comes to seek and to destroy. And now notice, he says this, Solomon, I close with this. He says this, for our vineyards are in blossom. Ah, wait a minute. Here's another clue. When does the enemy come to seek and to destroy? Mm -hmm. When does he begin with little foxes to allow uh, in the crevices that you've left open, that I've left open, and he begins to send little foxes? Here it is. When you are being fruitful. Mm -hmm. look, at, look at the enemy. Here's a warning. Build a fortress, a wall of protection around your fellowship with the Lord, around the church. Don't let false doctrine, don't let false teaching into your ears. Protect the church. Those that are outside of the church or in a messed up, warn them, hey, you shouldn't be going to those places and listening to those things. Those are not doctrinal things. You need to put a hedge of protection there. And then your marriages and your family. Mm. Critical. In the days in which we're living, who are you listening to? What are you listening to? Be careful of the little foxes that come in to spoil the vines. You pray for us, we're praying for you. We want our marriages to be strong. And one of the ways in which we can really practically do that with the Lord's help, our families to be strong, the church to be strong, is by being better listeners, being like Jesus, right? And so, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. To gather together around your word, your word is so rich. It's a timely word, Lord, where today people are listening to all kinds of stuff confused as ever before because we've wandered so far from your word that we're giving heed to seducing spirits false doctrine we need to set up a wall of protection around the things that we do hear and don't hear and lord cause us call us to this fellowship with you lord so that we can become more discerning of your voice the tender voice of the Holy Spirit through your word Lord as we spend time in your word and we're able to discern your word discern your heart make us keen Lord Jesus to the voice of your spirit that's going to remind us of all the things that you spoke he's not going to speak of himself he's going to speak the very things that you have spoken because he's just like you He's God the Spirit. So, Lord, cause us to, in our fellowship with you, to sit quietly, to listen, to have those type of hearts, Lord. Make ears out of our hearts and out of our minds, Lord God. Help us, Jesus, to listen more and speak less. Help us to measure our words, Lord. Help our words to be encouraging, not words of fire that are going to tear people down and discourage people and set them ablaze. Help us, Lord, in these days in which we're living. We want to be more like you. By your Spirit, Lord, we trust by faith that you can do it. In Christ's name, 